Expecting to hear about sheep tonight, you'd be disappointed. So you ran out of high end sheep something or another. So you could probably think of something. I mean, there's a lot more shepherd passages. Maybe uh, if uh, last week Jeff suggested that y'all read Ezekiel 34, and I don't know how many of you did that. Uh, that's a good exercise to do that when the, the whole chapter is about sheep. Tonight, I'm going to make a suggestion that you read John chapter 11, another chapter. I'm not going to read the whole chapter tonight. That's actually, we're going to do that Sunday. It's our gospel. Uh, actually, that's going to be our whole Bible reading is John 11. It's a long chapter. But if you'd like to read the whole thing yourself, it would be a very good thing. Uh, one of the most uh, notable chapters in the whole Bible. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And so that's uh, what we're looking at tonight. Uh, Jesus, the I am statements is our Lenten series. And I am the resurrection and the life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior. Thank you for these wonderful I am statements that so clearly identify who Jesus is. That he is one with the Father, but also getting us to think of all the many wonderful things he does for us. Ask your blessing on the preaching and the hearing of your word this evening, that it may bear fruit in our lives, help us to be strengthened in our faith, that we might uh, effectively witness for you in our world. In Jesus' name. Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And in a sense, that's true. Whenever a sick person was brought to Jesus, or whenever he went to one of them, he healed them. Out of compassion, Jesus healed the sick. That's just what he did. But Martha's statement also reveals a bit of a complaint. Now, before we get too down on complaining, of course, the Israelites, they were real good at it, and they got in trouble for it. There's a good kind of complaining and a bad kind. The good kind is when you let God know how you really feel about some things. Uh, I'll get to the danger in a minute, which is what the Israelites were. But, but it's, the Psalms are full of complaints, if you really look at them. We call them Psalms of Laments. Woe is me, that kind of thing. And God, aren't you listening? Are you there? Sometimes we feel that he isn't. The Psalms are, are full of those kinds of expressions. And it's good to express your honest feelings to the Lord. In fact, if you want to be heard by God, it's necessary to be honest with God. Because if you're not, that's hypocrisy. And of course, we don't want to do that. Uh, so it's good to be honest with the Lord. However, be careful not to put yourselves in the place of judge. If you think you know better than God, you're wrong. And that's what the Israelites, that was what they were guilty of. They just knew that God was wrong and that Moses was all wet and they were just on the wrong track all the time. It would be better off if we were back in Egypt. As if we know how God should run things, what he should do, and how and when he should do them. And we know the end of Lazarus' story. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. That glorified God greatly, much more than a healing would have done. But when things don't go our way, when prayers seemingly aren't answered, as Martha was feeling, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Our response should be to have patience. And continue in our trust. Isaiah reminded us in chapter 50, verse 10. He told us how to act when we don't have the light of day. When we don't hear God. It seems like the skies are brass. He said, who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Keep on trusting. Very often what we perceive as a no or as a wait as the answer to our prayer really is God working out something better than even, even we could think or imagine. 
It's a yes in process. So don't lose heart. Don't give up. As Paul said, pray without ceasing. Martha went on to express faith in Jesus. In John 11, she said, I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Martha had learned to trust in Jesus. We'll, we find out that her faith wasn't perfect yet, but she knew who to put it in. And that's the best thing. We don't need to worry about if we have enough faith, because Jesus said if you have a mustard seed, that's not very much. What matters is where you put your faith. Put it in Jesus and you'll be all right. Martha knew that the Father would answer Jesus' prayers, whatever he would ask. And so Jesus said in answer to that, your brother will rise again. Jesus meant right away. That's what he came there to do. That's why he waited so long to show up, was to raise him from the dead. And Martha wasn't figuring on that. When Jesus received the sister's original message that Lazarus was sick, he remained where he was for two days. Jesus said at that time, this sickness will not end in death. The disciples were probably thinking when they got there, well, Lord, it looks like it's, this sickness did end in death. But Jesus said, no, it's for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Lazarus had probably already died by the time Jesus got the message that he was sick. But Jesus knew from his Father. He was in constant communion with his Father, and he knew what he would do. He knew that raising a man who was dead for four days would show his power over death in a way that no one had ever shown it before. Jesus also knew that such a miracle would inspire his opposition to have him crucified when Jesus said that he might be glorified, the Son of Man might be glorified. When Jesus talks about being glorified in John's Gospel, he's not only talking about that his power might be shown, his majesty, his unity with the Father, but very often Jesus is referring to being lifted up and crucified. That's being glorified to Jesus, showing himself as the suffering servant, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so Jesus had every intention of late raising Lazarus from the dead. So when Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again, Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Thank God for that hope of resurrection on the last day. Thank God for the eternal life that we hope to gain, a, a new body. How many of us would like a new body? I mean, there's, the older I get, the more aches and pains that come, and I know a lot of you can identify with that. That's the anchor of hope that we have in Jesus Christ, not just a new body, but immortal body and soul. Everlasting joy. Mary and Martha had that hope. Many of the Old Testament and Bible time saints had that hope. We have that hope made even more certain because of the resurrection of Jesus and the witness in our hearts of the Holy Spirit. But Martha couldn't conceive of the Lord Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead right then. So when Jesus told her, your brother will rise again, she just automatically made that leap to in the future. She didn't figure Jesus came there to raise him from the dead. She just thought he was tardy. He was late. And why me? We're his best friends. Why didn't he get here on time of all places? But the Lord said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. The Lord declared that to Isaiah, and he continues to remind us that he is far above us. We know <coughs> Resurrection Day is coming, and yet we don't expect to see resurrections. We know the Lord heals, but we don't always expect it for us. We know the Lord saves sinners, 
But we don't expect the people we witness to to repent. We know the Lord uses people in a mighty way to do His work. But we don't expect Him to use us. But He does. He can and He will do all these things through faith. When the Bible says, God so loved the world, that meant you too. He loves you just as much as He loved Peter and James and John and Mary Magdalene and all the rest. Don't limit God. Don't limit what He wants to do in your life. With you. In you or for you. And so Jesus replied to Martha when she said, I know He'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, Jesus said. This is our promise of resurrection. This is our promise of eternal life. This is the promise as Jesus promised in several ways throughout his ministry in John chapter 5. He said, those who hear the voice of the Son of Man will rise up from their graves. And here he repeats it. For all of us will die sometime. That's what the effect of sin is in this world. Physically, we die. But for those of us who have faith in Jesus Christ, life after death awaits us. Resurrection awaits us. Our bodies will be resurrected to eternal life. Those who believe in me will live even though he dies. And then Jesus went on to say, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus promises that we need never ever fear spiritual death. We don't have to fear hell. He suffered that for us. Through faith in Him, we don't have to worry about that. Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. Those who by grace, through faith in Jesus, are born again will never die spiritually, only physically. Once born again, our physical death loses its power. It loses its power to terrify or destroy. It becomes a transition to glory from earth to heaven, from this life to life in heaven in God's presence. But there's another thing to think about. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Everybody's not going to be dead when Jesus comes back. There will be people living on earth. He may come tomorrow. He may come tonight. Those of us who are alive and believe in him will never die. There are people who will never die will be like Elijah and like Enoch. will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. will rise up to glory and never die. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We have that to look forward to. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. When Elijah raised the widow's son from death, when Elisha raised the Shunammite's son from death, it was Jesus the Lord. It was the Son of God's power that worked through them. There was a dead man who was put into the tomb of Elisha. When that dead man hit Elisha's bones, he sprang up back to life. That was the power of God's Son. And those dry bones heard the voice of Ezekiel prophesying, and they came back to life. The body came back together, and breath entered them. That was the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus that brought them back to life. And these things were all meant to bring hope to the downtrodden people, to remind them of their heritage of life in God, and the hope of eternal life in the Christ. And then Jesus came. Their faith began to flag. They were waiting, waiting 400 years, though the prophets didn't speak anymore, waiting for the Messiah to come, waiting for that long prophesied Savior. And then Jesus did come. He raised up from the dead the son of a widow at Nain. He raised from the dead Jairus' daughter. But some still doubted. 
Oh, that's true. He did mighty miracles. But where were those miracles from? But those were raised to life the same day that they died. But then Lazarus died four days later when decay had already set in. When the week of mourning was practically over, Jesus arrived saying, I am the resurrection and the life. For wherever Jesus is, there is life. Someone who claims to be resurrection and life is proclaiming power over death, power over the grave, power to give life where there is none. Jesus said, I am the resurrection of the life. And then he proved it by raising Lazarus up from the dead. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha replied, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who wants to come into the world. That is the whole reason that the Gospel of John was written. John said, These things have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God who was to come into the world, and that by believing he may have life in his name. Jesus asks us too, do you believe? Do you believe this? If so, let us live in the joy that that salvation in Jesus Christ gives to us. Amen.